Hello and welcome to a new video about contour engineering. Last time we talked about transfer elements. Further we talked about the transfer function. So we had a transfer element This transfer element had an input and an output. So there's one input which is transferred to the output. Here we had xi, here we had xo, and we said if we are using the help of a Laplace transformation then there is this transfer element can be described by a so-called transfer function g from s this is what we call them and then the input is also depending on s in the picture or laplace area and the output is also depending on s and the simple relationship between the output and the input is a multiplication with g, this transfer function. Okay. You know, we also said this is true if we have linear time invariant system which are reactionless. This is always the precondition. We have to keep this in mind that it needs to be reactionless and linear time invariant systems. Then it can then it can be written like this. Okay? Remember, reactionless means whatever is happening on the output, the input is not influenced by it or the system itself. This is time invariant and, and, and reactionless. Yeah. Today we want to think about what is happening if we do not have one of those transfer elements, but more. Okay. So one possibility of combining two transfer elements is to put them in a row. So we have here one transfer element, we have here one transfer element, there is one G1 from S, there is one G2 from S, then there is still an output, there is still an input to the system, so this xi from s and xo from s, they are still there. However, in between we do have an intermediate signal. This intermediate signal on this side it would be xo1. And this xo1 equals xi I'm using this form now, yeah? xi multiplied by g1 and this xo this is xi2 which is actually the same signal as xi1 so it is xo1 multiplied and now, of course, by G2. Okay. Now I just add this term to here. Yeah. So this equals Xi. Where's the green color here? Xi multiplied by G1 multiplied by G2, that's it. I just replaced this x01 with this term. So this here would be the total transfer function Gs. Xo is xi multiplied by Gs. So we can combine those two if they are in series. We can combine those two to one g by simply simple multiplication. Okay. 
always keep in mind this is only possible if the output here is not influencing the input here and also if for instance with passive passive materials with passive and passive networks so this means networks which do not add power or something like this uh, this is not working if we just have their resistors and, and capacitors and, 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 and inductives, uh, something like this, uh, so without some amplifier, without, without something producing energy. Yeah? And here the same, if I combine those two, it's a totally different thing, because then we would drain more power here, and more power drain would mean different behavior here. This is not reactionless. We always keep, have to keep in mind that this calculation here is only valid if we are talking about reactionless systems. If we just do a little influence, yeah, we can use it. Say, yeah, we, I know it's not perfect, but I use it and deal with the differences to the reality. If there's a major impact, What is a different possibility to group two things? Hmm? Different possibility would be parallel. Hmm? So that we have here an Xi. This is move to two transfer functions. Here again I use G1 and here again I use G2. And then I have one output here. And I do have one output here. Both are added to each other. That's the wrong color. Both are added to each other. And this will then be the output. Okay. So here we have Xi from S. Here we again have XO from S. Here we do have XO1 from S. And here we do have x02 from s and x01 from s equals xi from s multiplied by g1 clear right so this signal is this signal multiplied by the transfer function and here, XO2 is also Xi from S, because we feel it in here. Multiplied, and now, by G2. And XO, what is this? XO is XO1 plus, because we added, XO2. And now I'm using the values xi from s multiplied by g1 plus, and here we have xi from s multiplied by g2. So this is still xo. And this is now equal. And now I can factor out xi. Okay? You can simply factor it out. Xi from s. Multiplied. And big bracket. G1 from s. Plus G2 from s. And this again 
would be the total transfer function g from s. So if we have a, a variant like this and we have linear time invariant non-reaction uh, reactionless systems, then po, 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 the total transfer function is g1 plus g2. Okay. So this is how we can combine those things. This with this intermediate steps and so on, this is very usual, we can use it often. Yeah. Now let's have a look how it looks like if we want to, you know, those, those branching points and also the summarizing points, if we want to move them to some place else. Okay. So let's say we have one transfer function. G from S, there is the input. And there's the output. There's a branch. So here we have our xi from s. Here we have xo from s. xo1 from s, I call it. And here we have xo2 from s. Even if it's the same. Yeah. And we want, what do we want to do? We want to move this branching point before the transfer function. Okay. What do we have to do? So now this xi from s is now branched. As we said, we want to move it before. Yeah. Here, it is producing XO1, yeah. and of course this is done by using G from S. And how to get XO2? I also have to add a transfer function. And since XO2 is running through G here, it is also G from S. And here we get XO2. I just have to take care that the output is not changed by simply adding something. Okay, this is, keep it neutral, okay, let's try the other way around. Huh? So if we do have situation similar to this, but this time we have here one transfer function and this time we have here a second transfer function. So we're not having G and G, but we are having a G1. and a G2. And the input is reaching both. And here we have the output XO1 and the XO2. So here we have XI from S. Here's XO1. And here's XO2. And what we want to do is we want to move this branching point after the transfer function. Okay. So here we have now transfer function. G1. This time before 
there is no branch, so there is xi going directly into it. Huh? And the output is, of course, x01. Clear. Yeah. But now there is the branching. What do I need to do here? What do I need to add here to be able to reach x02? Of course, I have to at G2, uh, so there is G2, this is still there, uh, and in this case we were not going through G1, here we are going to G1, so we are messing with Xi, and we need to get rid of all the stuff G1 was doing to Xi, so we simply have to divide by G1. Uh -huh. This is how we can move branching points. Okay? This is how we, we are moving branching points. And now let's have a look how we are moving uh, summation points. So let's say we have two. transfer functions and here is our mixing point hmm? the two transfer function has two different outputs And there is the output. So this is our XO from S. This is our XI1, XI2. And of course, there are the transfer functions G1 and G2. And we are adding those two things. So this would then be x01 and this then would be x02. And we again want to move this mixing point here. Okay. How we are adding, how we can do this. So we have here xi one. Then there is the mixing point. Then there is some output of the mixing point going into G one. And there we want to have XO out. So here we have here we have G1 plus. And here we're adding something. How would the transfer function, which is needed here, look like? Huh? Here we are again feeding in xi2. Of course, we are still having g2.
this will be added here. Uh, since this G2 uh, will mess up here, in this case, this is XO2. So here we are having XO equals XO1 plus XO2 equals XI1 G1 plus XI2 G2. And here we have XO equals, and I call this here XD, and XD is XI1 plus XO2 uh, multiplied by G1 so this is G1 multiplied by XI1 this I have again uh, this is good plus and now XO2 is XI2 uh, xi2 multiplied by g2 multiplied by g1 this is too much this g1 here is too much so if we not having this G2 here, but G2 divided by G1, then this G2 is getting G2 divided by G1. G1 is gone and it's only G2. So this is what I need. This is what I need because then it's here divided by G. This is gone, and I'm ending up at xi1 from s multiplied by g1 from s plus xi2 from s multiplied by g2 from s. Okay, exactly the same situation. So this is this is how you can find out what you would need there simply by comparing. Okay, move it in front. What if we want to move this backwards? So we have here some xi1, here's some ration point, here we have here some xi2, so there is some intermediate signal coming out and this is passing now through a transfer function G plus plus and here we have XO Here they will call, also call XD. Okay. Now we want to move this summaration point after X G from S. Uh, so it will look like this. 
there is G. There's one output. And then there is the summarization point. And then I want to get out XO. XO should not change, of course. If I'm looking at XI2, what I need to do with XI, first I'm summarizing this. Uh, and then passing through G. Uh, now I'm passing through G and then I want to add something that the same thing is coming out. So I also have to pass this signal here through the very same G transfer. Uh, and then there is something else appearing and this I need to summarize. Uh, simply do the same both sides plus plus. Uh -huh. So this is how you can move summarization points. Mm -hmm. And if you're having simply one transfer network where you don't really know how to solve this, you can always apply a technique like this. Uh -huh. I just used there and showed you how we can deal with this. Give you one example. Give you one example how, how we can manage to calculate a total transfer function. Let's say we do have one transfer function here, G1. output this is already XO okay so this is XO from S however then we have a second transfer function and now we do have a unexpected twist because we are using XO as input here so this is this here is G1 G2 of course. And we're again having a mixing point. There is an output. This direction. Then we move further. And here there's the input. xi from s and further this one this one is added and this one is subtracted how and i want to calculate a total transfer function of this how to start simply by naming all possible variables, uh, all possible signals. So I just tell this signal here, yeah, this is the signal Y. Just name it. Yeah. And this Y from S is the input of this one, so this would be XO, yeah, multiplied by the transfer function, and this would be G2. Yeah. Now, what is this? I call this xd for difference. Yeah. What is this? This is xi minus y. And this actually is xi minus XO multiplied 
by G1, a G2. Multiply by this one. Huh? Simply use this. Huh? Okay, and what is XO? XO is XD multiplied by G1. Now G1 is correct. <laughs> G1. So let's write this. XD is this here. Yeah, so I will simply open a big bracket. So we're having here XI from S minus XO from S multiplied by G2. This is this is now XD. Yeah? and multiplied by G1. Okay. I'll write now here further. So we are having X having XO from S equals. Uh, I will get this into the bracket. So we are having XI from S multiplied by G1. It's this term. And then minus XO multiplied by G1 and still multiplied by G2. Okay. Now I have an equation. I'm going to separate the variables. Yeah? So I bring this to the other side. So now on the left hand side there is written XO and then plus, hmm, this to the other side, XO multiplied by G1 multiplied by G2 equals, and on the right hand side there is left, XI multiplied by G1. Hmm. Now I can factor this out, so there is written XO multiplied by big bracket 1 plus G1 multiplied by G2 equals and here is written XI multiplied by G1 okay. and now I just have to get this to the other side and there is written then XO equals xi multiplied by g1 divided by 1 plus g1 g2 so this here would be the total transfer function g from s if we have linear time invariant systems, which are looking like this, I can simply substitute it with one transfer element with this transfer function. And if I have a linear time invariant system, which how we found out last time is shown as polynome fracture, uh, so there is a polynome in nominator and uh, there is a polynome in, in uh, denominator. In <laughs> there is a polynome in zero and in nenner, yeah? in numerator, not nominator, Nomin in, in numerator and denominator. Yeah? Above and below in the fraction there is both polynomes. And this, if this is all polynomes, this will, the structure will be the same. It's polynome to polynome divided by polynome. So it will always be a polynomial S, yeah? if we do have linear time invariant system which are reactionless. Yeah? This I mentioned it several times now because this is important. Yeah? Because in reality we do not meet this criteria too often. Yeah? We are only close to, and this is why we still can calculate on the third comma uh, value 
and still are not hitting how it is in reality. Yeah? Not covering it, simply because reality is too complex for a model. Yeah? So this is how we are dealing with this stuff. Yeah? Next time we're going to talk about uh, frequency responses. Yeah? So th this is now the transfer function of, of how a signal is going to be transferred to the output. Yeah? Next time this input function will be some swinging simply. Yeah? How is the out output reacting on swinging inputs? Yeah? This is the frequency response. If you remember in, in measurement we have talked about frequency response. Yeah? So the input is not any signal, it's a sine wave. Yeah? And the, what is the output doing with the sine wave? Yeah? We can also read this out of this transfer function. How this is working and what we have to do for this yeah, will be covered in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.